In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise be Jesus and Mary, now and forever. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, this is going to be like a long homily. We're going to go from the pulpit to the pavement. In this episode called Building a Marian Culture in Search of the Face of Jesus. We go in search of the face of the Lord. Going to a place in London which is known for its art, we want to be able to contemplate the face of the Lord always. And we're going to have the help of Saint Padre Pio of Petrucina. This is a bit like a story about two people who go on a journey to pay back a debt. We are very indebted to Saint Padre Pio who helped um, some people in a place called Camberwell. And we're going to bring Saint Padre Pio back to Camberwell. We go to Camberwell also to give back what we received. We've received a lot from this area. God has given us many blessings from this area. And we go back with Padre Pio in search of the face of the Lord. In the 16 and 1700s, there was a conceptionist nun who was shown the 20th century in advance. And what she saw was so shocking, she actually died. We're talking about the apparitions of Our Lady of Good Success, where Venerable Mother Mariana de Jesus Torres was asked, was commissioned by the Blessed Virgin to have a statue realized. And this miraculous statue was completed with the help of the archangels, Saint Michael, Saint Gabriel, and Saint Raphael, with the help of Saint Francis of Assisi. A local artist was initially commissioned and he began the work and he went to Spain to get some very particular materials to be able to finish the work. And when he came back, the work was already done. It was finished, it was completed. So we are going to go to a place in London that is known for its art, Camberwell. It's known for its art mainly because it has an art college there, but it is a place full of art. And what we are going to do is we are going to collect, as it were, the different talents and gifts of the people there in that place. Five in particular, music, painting, poetry, theatre, and even sports can be considered as um, a talent, as a gift. And we're going to evangelize through the cross. So this is an image of Venerable Mother Mariana de Jesus Torres, who we mentioned, who is taking a measurement of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And she was going to begin this mission of producing a piece of artwork. We are going to go to a place that has the postcode SE5 and we're going to use that number 5 on our journey. We're going to preach Christ crucified just by walking around and we're going to look and go in search of the face of the Lord. So here we have an image of the crown of thorns which we've just seen quickly, um, a statue with the crown of thorns to begin our journey in going in search of the face of the Lord. So I am accompanied um, by someone who is from Camberwell, 
We're going to give him the nickname Brother Raphael. He's going to be like the Archangel Raphael for us on our journey. And we're going to go in search of the face of the Lord to see anything that can speak to us about Christ. So here we see uh, a cross. This um, is an Eritrean Orthodox Church. And here already we see an image of Christ. There are two angels on both sides of the image of the child Jesus there that we saw. One of the archangels is Saint Raphael and the other, sorry, one is Saint Michael the archangel and the other is Saint Gabriel the archangel. We're just commentating on some filming that we did in 2019. Um, this was before the COVID-19 pandemic. And we're recording this today on the 21st of September, 2021, which is the feast of St. Matthew, the apostle and evangelist, St. Matthew who evangelized Ethiopia. And the 21st of September is also the feast day of St. Iphigenia of Ethiopia who was a virgin who consecrated herself to God through St. Matthew, the evangelist. So we're just going to walk around without saying anything because our religious habit preaches without words. And St. Francis wanted the habit in the form of a cross. So we are preaching the cross just by walking around. We come to the courtyard of a Catholic church called Sacred Heart, and we can contemplate the face of Christ in the face of his mother. So I'm going to narrate to you um, our adventure, as it were, in um, this part of London called Camberwell. There was some loud music being played outside the church. There was a party going on. And I remember someone telling me they had a dream once outside of this church and there was something that wanted to enter the church that should not enter maybe this is a bit like a manifestation of the dream we can't bring inside the church um all of this so um they were having quite a party when i say we can't bring all of that inside the church we can't bring um certain dancing and certain, um, we can't have a rave inside the church. So we go in search of the face of Jesus and we want to contemplate Jesus in the people, contemplate Jesus even in nature. So first we saw an image of the crown of thorns, which was um, very quickly. And then we saw an image of the child Jesus with his mother, we saw his mother's face. And here we can contemplate the sacred heart, although you can't see the heart visible, but you can see um, our Lord with his hands open and you can see the wounds in his hands and in the middle of our Lord's chest is obviously his heart. So we can contemplate the sacred heart of Jesus. So we're going around basically to collect the different talents of the people and we're going to bring them all to the cross and offer them to Jesus on the cross as a prayer, as an offering, as a sacrifice. We're going to offer ourselves as well because coming from this place, Camberwell, SE5, we, in a certain sense, represent um, who the people are and we share some of their talents and gifts. So when we offer ourselves, it's like we're offering the people as well. At the end of that road there, is Brixton. Brixton is one of the districts that um, 
our neighbours with Camberwell. And we come here also, this is um, our tour guide, let's say. We're just going to call him Brother Raphael, who's dressed in the blue t-shirt. He's kind of um, accompanying us on our journey, like the Archangel Raphael. And we began with a prayer to the Archangel Raphael. It's actually August in 2019. It's a Sunday. Um, this morning, we celebrated a traditional Latin Mass in a church in central London called St. James's in Spanish Place. And we're going to use the number five. As Jesus had five wounds. And we're going to use the number five like the five stones of David. David picked up five smooth stones and went to slay Goliath. And those five stones represent the five wounds of Christ. And this is an image, a statue of Saint Padre Pio of Petrucina, an Italian saint who died in 1968. Um, we just use this small statue um, to represent um, Padre Pio com coming to conquer Camberwell and St. Padre Pio had the stigmata, which is the five wounds of Christ impressed in his hands, his side and his feet. This is a council estate in Camberwell that borders Brixton. So basically at the end of this council estate, which is in Camberwell, you go to Brixton. So Brixton is just at the end of that council estate. And we present also different artwork. So this um, is a piece of artwork. It's a statue of Saint Philomena. In the, the following episode that we are going to do, we are going to go briefly to a place in Northwest London called Harlesden. And you'll find out more about Saint Philomena when we get there. But we entrust this today's mission um, to Saint Philomena. We'll be doing filming for two days um, here in Camberwell. We didn't have time to go to Brixton, so right at the end of that road um, is Brixton. Um, that'll take you towards Angel Town Estate in Brixton, and you could also go to um, Mitesfield Estate in Brixton, and you can go to Loughborough Estate in Brixton. So Brixton is a stone throw away from Camberwell. Uh, maybe next time we'll go to Brixton, but um, today we are in SE5 um, in honour of the five wounds. We'll be doing um, some filming also tomorrow, as I mentioned today is Sunday. This is the weekend of the Notting Hill Carnival. And this filming doesn't have any audio which is why we're talking over it. But here, there was some loud music playing coming from one of these houses, some reggae music, which is music that comes from Jamaica. And we are carrying the people's gifts and talents with us and offering it to God like a worker bee, a worker bee that goes to get nectar and brings it to make honey, brings it to its queen. This episode is called Building a Marrying Culture. So we're going to be like a tour guide um, around Camberwell Green. And it's going to be like an open art gallery. We mentioned in the inner city, not just Camberwell, but in the inner city in general, there's so much talents and gifts. There's a train passing and under this archway, under this bridge, right at the end of the street, you get Brixton, you get to Brixton. So basically if I walk underneath this arch, I go from Campbellville to Brixton and that's how close Brixton is. And we did actually go to Brixton 
Um, so over there is Loughborough Council Estate. We went to Brixton later on in that um, in 2020, um, not with uh, a camera, but with our recording device, and we did a brief interview um, with a young lady who wants to begin a modest clothing line. She wants to put modest clothing out on the market. And we'll speak about modesty a little later on in connection to what this nun that we showed in the beginning had seen, what she was told throughout the 20th century and our current times. She saw um, the future, she saw our times, and she saw that modesty will hardly be seen in women and we have to defend the dignity of the woman and saint padre pio wanted his spiritual children to wage a war against indecent fashions now along this road um many years ago i met a soldier soldier who was in the British Army, who was originally from Grenada, who was awarded the Victoria Cross. He was awarded this cross for his bravery when his tank was under fire. He was able to escape, but he went back and pulled out all of his companions one by one while the tank was under fire. So you imagine the tank has a ladder that enables you to go down into the tank and to get back up out the tank. So imagine putting someone, um, one of your companions on your shoulder while the tank is under attack and carrying them to safety one by one. That's what we have to do with souls. We're looking at this tree because we were saying that even in a tree you can contemplate the cross you can think of something of our lord jesus christ even in contemplating the tree the cross which is the true tree of life so i met this soldier who's from grenada in one of these roads many years ago and we have to be soldiers for Christ, who are brave, who, while their brethren is under attack, by brethren we say our neighbour, our fellow brothers, while they are under attack, we have to put our neck on the line, as it were, to try to save them. Jesus said, no greater love have a man than he who laid down his life for his friends. So we have to be willing to lay down our lives for our friends, for our neighbour, for our brother. Love thy neighbour as thyself. So we come here because we know about many of the social issues and problems in the inner city. And we come here not to judge because we come from this place. We are one of them. But we come, as it were, to carry on our shoulders and bring to safety our brethren. Imitating Jesus, the good shepherd. There are images of Jesus carrying a sheep on his shoulders. So Jesus came from heaven to save us. The good shepherd would go, would leave 99 sheep to go after the lost sheep. Sometimes you have images of a sheep that is entangled in thorns, trapped, crying out for help. That is like the soul that is tangled and trapped in their sins, calling out for mercy. 
Some people are tangled and trapped without even realizing it, but their soul is asking for mercy. We come here not to judge, but to bring the truth of Christ crucified. So here on this road called the Cold Harbour Lane, which is a road that connects Brixton and Camberwell, you can see this man enjoying the music that's coming out from, um, it was probably a barber shop. As I mentioned today, it's Sunday, so thanks be to God, you can see most of the shops are closed. On the, on the end of this corner, there was a quite a gathering of, of, of men. And we didn't really want to turn the camera towards them because, you know, they might think, well, we're going to take that camera away from them. So, <laughs> I mean, um, the gentleman who is accompanying us, um, he enabled us to, to use his, 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 um, his phone to film it. Um, so you can see the betting shop is open on a Sunday. So we didn't turn the camera um, on all of them, on all of those men that was there gathered on the street corner um, because they'd probably take the phone. So someone has um, placed their seti out on the pavement. And we weren't able to enable you to hear some of the, let's say, South London music or inner city music. Um, that was playing. But we need to purify music. We can't have music that has bad lyrics, using bad language, music that talks about impurity. Music has to be used for God, for Christ. And now we mentioned immodesty. Why is it important to speak about modesty? And we mentioned we're not here to judge. However, we have to speak the truth because Jesus said the truth will set you free. Tight-fitting clothing is immodest. It reveals the form and it causes men to lust. So you can see, um, welcome to... Um, Anyway, we're just talking spontaneously um, without without writing a script. Um, we're just going to, this is our tour guide. We need to promote the important role of women in society. The woman has a very important role to play. In many ways, it is her who will save the society. Just one dignified woman is all it takes to elevate and raise the minds of heart the minds and hearts of men to god but she forfeits that dignity if she dresses immodestly and we mentioned if someone is unaware of what immodest dress is tight fitting dresses and skirts even if it's a dress that goes all the way down to your to your ankles if it's tight fitting and it exposes the form the figure it is a modest. So I'm sure um, it's very obvious um, that anything that shows um, flesh, etc., is a modest. And Saint Padre Pio. did not like trousers for women, did not like trousers for women. Now, we are going to go to a place where we're going to preach a little bit. We're not necessarily going to preach to the people. This is going to be our way of doing a bit of poetry. But we're going to preach Christ crucified. We're going to narrate to you um, very shortly an episode that happened 
regarding the five wounds. This is some of the local artwork. So we mentioned um, people in the inner city are very talented. This is a, an art gallery that closed down. We mentioned Campbell is known for its art. And um, we see something about a butterfly, which is interesting because, so here's an example of um, indecent dress. We mentioned butterfly because a butterfly was discovered in Camberwell, which is called the Camberwell Beauty. And um, you'll notice in Camberwell, there are images of butterflies of the Camberwell Beauty, which is a butterfly that was discovered in Camberwell. And this is what we want to bring. We go in search of the face of Christ and we want to be able to purify these gifts. Imagine um, the person who did that image is very creative. Um, this art gallery um, would have exhibitions of different types of artwork. We want a culture for Christ. Christian culture. We want to be able to use all of our gifts and talents for God, to give everything back to God. When Christ comes back, will he find any faith on the earth? So it's good that we were able to come and see something that tells us about Christ. Um, this says the largest art shop south of the river. So we mentioned um, Campbell is known for its art. We have to become a piece of artwork, let's say. What are God's masterpieces? God's masterpieces are the saints. So if you imagine, the grace of God is like paint and your soul is like a canvas. Through God's grace, he paints a most beautiful image in your soul. And that canvas will shine in the Father's house for all eternity, your soul. We have to have a soul that is beautiful. We spoke about the butterfly that was discovered in Campbell called the Campbell World Beauty. You have to become beautiful in your soul through God's grace, through living in God's grace, through being in a state of grace. We have to keep the commandments. We have to live the gospel. We have to be like Jesus. So, if you imagine a butterfly, before it becomes a butterfly, it's a caterpillar. The caterpillar eats leaves and so here we have a place called Butterfly Walk. So I've told you why you see a lot of references to the butterfly in Camberwell. I mean, the, the, the piece of artwork that we saw on the wall of a boxer, um, that doesn't really have anything to do with the Camberwell beauty. However, you'll see a lot of references to butterflies. So we want to give back what we've received. We mentioned St. Padre Pio of Pietrocina interceded and helped a family who lived in Camberwell. And we want to 
give back. We want to give thanks. We are approaching a place where we're going to do a little bit of theatre. We're going to preach like St. Paul of the Cross, who was holding the cross in the beginning. And we're going to tell you a story about the five wounds and a miraculous victory that happened in the 12th century, in the 1100s. We are now in, let's say, the center of Camberwell, in Camberwell Green. And if you wanted um, a reminder of um, what we were talking about earlier, there you have it. Talk about the tree of life and the cross. Let us go to preach Christ crucified and this. Camberwell Green Park is a place where you have some performances, some people do um, even a bit of theatre and drama. We're going to do our own bit of drama. We mentioned that even sport, um, in many ways, is a talent, is a gift a lot of people in the inner city have. On our second day, we are going to quickly go and visit one of the neighboring districts. We mentioned Brixton um, is one of the neighboring districts. There's also Kennington, there's also Woolworth Road. Um, some of the local people call it Woolly Road. There's also East Dulwich, there's also Hearn Hill. And there's Peckham. The second day we're going to pay a quick visit to Peckham. Now we're going to explain our story and we're going to preach the five wounds from the street corner. We're not going to preach at anyone, but we're just going to tell the story of Fatima. So here is a shop that has the Portuguese, it's a Portuguese shop. It has the Portuguese coat of arms. Now, if you look very carefully, the Portuguese coat of arms, which is also, um, I mean, it's, it's the coat of arms of the Royal House of Braganza, which was the Portuguese royal family. This coat of arms is also on the Portuguese flag. And if you look carefully, you'll see five blue shields. And within those five shields, there are five little white circles. It's a bit like a domino piece with the number five. Well, those five white dots, five little white balls, represent the five wounds of Christ. So we've come to a place called SE5. And we said we're going to use that to speak about the five wounds. So the very first Portuguese king was in a war against five kings. Portugal was invaded at that time, you know, it was under occupation. 
And, you know, the king um, was outnumbered. This was Don Alphonse Enrique, the first Portuguese king. This happened in the 1100s. And the legend is that Jesus appeared to him, Jesus on the cross, assuring him of victory. He wanted the king to trust that he would have his help. And the king did trust. And he won a miraculous victory against all odds, against these five kings. So the five blue shields represent the five kings that were defeated. And the five little white circles represent the five wounds of Christ. So this is like a nice marriage between um, Portugal and Camberwell. Camberwell SE5 and Portugal with the five wounds. You see those five shields represent the five kings that were defeated and the five small little circles represent the five wounds, which is what I'm trying to explain. Now, the man who led the king's army, the king who won, um, here, this is our statue of St. Padre Pio Petrocino, who had the five wounds. So we're just trying to put everything together. It's like a marriage, Camberwell and Padre Pio, Camberwell and Portugal, everything. But anyway, the man who led the king's army, as a reward, he can choose, he, he could choose um, from one of the prisoners, um, the female prisoners, um, as a wife. And the most beautiful of these prisoners was um, a princess called Fatima. Um, Fatima was not a Christian. And Um, we're saying that we're going to go into this council estate very shortly. So Fatima was not a Christian, but she willingly accepted to be baptized. Nobody forced her to be baptized. I mean, um, the man who led this king's army was a Christian. Um, so she was baptized, took the name Auriana, and the man who had... Um, this princess as his wife, he loved her very much. She died not too long um, after. Um, and he loved her so much, he named all of his land after her. And that is why in Portugal, you have a place called Fatima. There's a place in Portugal called Fatima. So that's connected to this miraculous victory over five kings and the five wounds of Christ. Up there um, is a very rich road called Camberwell Grove. Um, that's like the posh part of Camberwell. I mean, we're recording this in 2019. After 2019, Camberwell and other parts um, of London have become more gentrified. Um, so I'm sure um, some people know what gentrification means and what areas becoming gentrified means. So up that road is Camberwell Grove. But a stone throw away from Camberwell Grove um, to our left is a council estate where there was a lot of gang activity on this estate. This is a Neapolitan restaurant called Francesco's and we greet all of our um, viewers from Italy. So on this estate there used to be a lot of gang activity. I mean now most of these camp council estates are like ghost towns in the sense that you don't have um, the strong gang activity um, that you used to have on some of these council estates. Um, 
this estate for many people was quite dangerous at night time. Um, so the local people, um, if you're from um, Camberwell or Peckham, um, and you're aware of the gang culture, um, people will be able to tell you um, a little bit more um, about the gang culture. And this estate here, which is probably one of the main estates in Camberwell, um, that was known for its gang culture. So, in explaining the episode that happened in Portugal, um, standing on the street corner, and we didn't really care if people were looking at us, that's a little bit of poetry, a little bit of theatre for you. And speaking of theatre and drama, it's through places like Camberwell, um, let's say the more backstreet parts of Camberwell, that a radio show um, on Radio Macolata um, took its inspiration from. It's a drama show called Dialogue with Father John. Dialogue with Father John is a made-up story about two rival gangs on from two different council estates. One council estate has a bit of green paint on it, and another council estate has a bit of red paint on it. So one council estate has the nickname Red Brick and the other council estate has the nickname Green Brick. And from these um, two council estates, there are two gangs that grew. And the story of Dialogue with Father John is that there's this very posh priest who moves into the area and he tries to um, dialogue and speak to the local people and you know you can find out more about Dialogue with Father John on Radio Immaculata to see if this um, priest is successful in bringing peace. So this is one of the council estates, this is probably the main one um, where there was very strong gang activity As I mentioned, some people um, would be afraid to come here at night. And you'll find out why the drama show on Radio Macalata takes its inspiration um, from council estates like this one. As I mentioned now, um, most of these council estates are like ghost towns, but um, years ago, um, you'd pass through here and you'd see um, a whole a whole lot of youth congregated. <laughs> um, so some people were very intimidated, and some would be afraid. Um, you know, when they would walk through here. Now, I knew someone, I knew a family who lived here on this estate. Um, and, you know, I still know people who live here. We're going from the pulpit to the pavement. 
there's a lot of people who preach about you know getting close to the local people and you know um going out there and doing something and etc etc but are they really doing it And this morning we celebrated the traditional Latin Mass in a church in central London called St. James's. This is a green fence. This is a green fence. So this is our green brick. This is the origin of green brick. See? This is a, a Greek Orthodox church called St. Mary's. The first day we saw an Eritrean Orthodox church. Now, as we go on our way to Peckham, we're going to walk to Peckham. This is Camberwell Green Park. Many years ago, while walking through this park, on the floor here, I found an image, a holy card of a saint from Lebanon called Saint Charbel. It was very providential. I just walked and I saw this image. Um, this is what Saint Charbel look, looks like. I just um, showed you an image of Saint Charbel very quickly. But in the saints, you can also see something of the face of Christ. He spoke about being able to see the face of Christ in his mother. You can see the image, the face of Christ, in his saints i mean you can see the face of christ in every human being and towards the end of our episode we're going to present to you the face of christ in different saints from africa as i mentioned you can contemplate the face of christ in everyone we are all made in his likeness and image in the likeness and image of god and jesus is god we're on our way to peckham so before we said that if you cross the road from that council estate called southampton way you're in peckham well we've crossed the road and here we are in peckham i'm just retracing my steps because i used to walk from Camberwell to Peckham to go to school. I went to secondary school in Peckham. So we're now in SE 15, Peckham. And we are on our way to the cross. Um, it's a hot day in August. And our journey is, is going to reach its climax. We said we wanted to collect all of our material to be able to paint or at least produce an image, um, do some drawing. We said that we have to become like a beautiful masterpiece. Our soul has to become beautiful. We have to allow God to paint, as it were, in our soul all the virtues charity humility obedience chastity meekness simplicity patience all the virtues we have to have them in our soul and we spoke about yellow brick this is an estate in Peckham that's just nicknamed Yellow Brick. 
because there are parts of the estate um, that have yellow bricks, so they just call it yellow brick. And we are going to go to a church called Our Lady of Sorrows, which was actually closed when we got there. But we were going there for a cross. There is a cross. And that was where we were going to end our journey. We're going to go in search of the face of Christ. We're going to briefly go to Peckham and then we're going to go back to Camberwell. And we'll conclude in Camberwell. But we wanted to come to a cross. And this is the image that we also wanted to paint. Jesus on the cross. So on the first day, you saw us holding up a cross. In our introduction, we had an image of St. Paul of the cross. And we said that even in a tree, you can contemplate something of the cross, the tree of life. Jesus was hung on a tree. The cross is described as a tree. And this is an image that God wants to paint in our souls. Jesus Christ on the cross. We have to be united to the cross. This is a place called Friary Road in Peckham. The Franciscans used to be here. The Capuchin Franciscans used to be here in Peckham. And how can you have the image, let's say, of the cross painted, as it were, in your soul. How can you become one with the cross? We said that St. Francis wanted the habit of the Franciscans to be in the form of a cross. So this gray habit that I'm wearing um, is in the form of a cross. It's to preach. It's a sign. The habit is a sign. It's to give witness, testimony. So we were trying to get our bearings again because it's been so long since we um, we've walked through some of these back streets. And we just wanted to double check the way to Our Lady of Sorrows. So I used to walk from Camberwell to Our Lady of Sorrows because they used to have adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. Um, during the day. So I would walk there and and that was a, a special grace for me to be able to come to Our Lady of Sorrows. Here you see a statue of St. Francis of Assisi, the founder of the Franciscans. And here, here is the cross we are talking about. This is where many things on Radio Macolata um, have their origin. The cross. In search of the face of Christ, here is the face of Christ. Let us contemplate. Christ on the cross. This church 
was designed by the architect Pugin. And we're just explaining um, this exchange with the cross. As I mentioned, the church was closed. Okay, you now have the Vincenzans and they have a Grenada mission. We mentioned we met a, a soldier from Grenada who was awarded the Victoria Cross for his bravery. Well, imagine for loving God with your whole heart and loving your neighbor as yourself, you are rewarded, not with an earthly award, but you are rewarded with eternal life. But we have to be one with the cross. We have to deny ourselves, pick up our cross and follow Christ to be a disciple of Christ. That is the true cross we have to have. So one thing is to be awarded the Victoria Cross for your bravery. Another thing is to be able to pick up your cross, follow Christ by denying yourself to have an eternal reward in heaven. And this is why we have to preach the cross. This is why we want to preach the cross. If any man come after me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross and follow me. So we said we were just going to go briefly to Peckham because we didn't really have that much time. Um, the show was dedicated to um, us coming to Camberwell. So we thought we'd be generous and enter a little bit into one of the neighboring districts. We didn't have time to go into Brixton. Um, but as we mentioned, we did go we did go back to Brixton um, later on. We wasn't able to film anything, um, but we did record um, a brief interview. So here we're talking about the rosary. Um, the camera, I mean, <laughs> this is a Monday. It's bank holiday Monday. It's the, it's the weekend and the bank holiday Monday of the Notting Hill Carnival. So on a bank holiday, um, you find that most of the shops are closed. We came back to Peckham um, later on and we went to an art gallery further up the road. Um, one of my relatives put on an, an art exhibition. And Peckham has become very gentrified. So we're back in Camberwell. This is another estate in Camberwell that is that was known for its gang activity. Maybe it probably still is. But as I mentioned, I mean most of the states, um, you know, people have grown up and moved on. I mean, you do have on this estate, you you, you probably still find a lot of young people here. This is an estate called Letson. Letson which was known for its gang activity and probably still is. And we were going to call this episode Padre Pio Conquers Camberwell. But we've called it Going in Search of the Face of Christ. And as we mentioned, 
we are going to conclude by um, showing some images of some African saints. And we're going to do our part to try to promote um, one of these saints called Saint Benedict the Moor. So here I am um, going to give a very quick lesson on how to produce an image. Um, the drawing was already done. So what I was doing, I was just um, smudging just with some tissue um, the image. Um, I put one layer, one layer of color as a base. And here I'm adding another layer um, through using this smudging technique. All I was using was ordinary coloring pencils. So the image was drawn with a pencil. Then I used a pen. You could see it's quite a thick pen. It's a very simple image. Um, now in the background, there is um, an image of a CD cover. Um, it's not um, a music CD that um, I want to in any way promote um, because um, it has a parental advisory label on it. Um, I'm counting with my thing. I'm counting with my fingers um, because we're we're explaining something about number five, and we're going to do five things and whatever. Um, but anyway, I wanted to use this image just to help me with the the, the shading and the colors, and I, I wanted to use it to explain how we want to change having the face of a thug or someone who's very serious um we just want to use this as an example um we're not judging in any way the person that the camera is focusing on but we want to change the faces to being a happy face to being someone who has god in their soul to being someone who has the peace of Christ through being in the grace of God. So we're saying we're going to use um, as a reference for some of the shades, um, this image and place it in this image, but we're saying that this is what we want the future to be. Souls that have Jesus, within them. Souls that have the peace of Christ within them. And um, now we're going to give you a quick example of how to do a drawing. So we're um, using this coloring pencil and we're, we're putting more definition, putting more tone, you see, trying to make it come to life a bit more, it's trying to make it more 3D. And I said, we come to Camberwell to give back what we received. So it was in Camberwell, in this place, um, not this particular house, you know, where we would develop our drawing and practice our drawing and um, try to develop uh, our talent. So we said that um, 
you can contemplate the face of Christ, you know, in everyone, but in a, in a particular way in the saints. Those were the people who were like Jesus, who imitated Jesus. So in the saints, it's like you see another Jesus, you know, and we wanted to also share with you um, the different African saints and we're doing our part to promote them by producing an image. Um, this is a Franciscan saint called Saint Benedict the Moor, also known as Benedict the Black. He was a Franciscan. Um, I'm a Franciscan as well. And this was actually done before we went to Peckham. And we said, where are we going to go? This was like a, a plan for future um future adventures i mean we're not always going to go out to the streets we're not always going to go to the inner city um this is the first um of probably be two or three episodes and um we're not sure if we do how much we'll do after that um you know a friar lives in a friary and um, we do go out, but adventures like these, um, we're not going to do them every day. So this was, you know, 2019. We said that in 2019, Peckham, um, according to this website, was said to be, um, and this is no, this is, um, anyway, this was a list. We are going to go to Harlesden, and we did go to Harlesden. We mentioned in relation to Saint Philomena. This is the finished product of Saint Benedict the Moor. This is um, what we've gone in search of the face of Christ. This is Saint Cyprian of Carthage in Tunisia. This is Saint Moses the Black from Ethiopia. These are not images that were done by ourselves. Um, this is Saint Caleb, also known as Saint Elisban, who was the king of Ethiopia. This is Saint Anthony of Carthage. This is Saint Martin de Porres from Peru. And this is an image of Saint Benedict the Black, also known as Saint Benedict the Moor. This is the same image that um, we try to do a copy of ourselves. This is an image of St. Charles Luanga, one of the martyrs from Uganda. This is an image of Blessed Gebre Mikael from Ethiopia. Here you have an image of Blessed Gildo Irwa, a, Uganda, a martyr from Uganda. This is an image of Blessed Daudi Okelo, who is also a martyr from Uganda. This is an image of Blessed Isador Bakanja, who was from Congo, a martyr. This is an image of, this is an actual photo, a real life photo of Blessed Francisco de Paula Victor from Brazil. 
This is a photo, a photograph of Blessed Peter Torot from Papua New Guinea. So these photographs are those who lived in the 20th century. This is a photograph of Blessed Cyprian Michael Tanzi from Nigeria. This is a photo of Blessed Benedict Daswa from South Africa, a martyr who died in 1990. This is a photograph of Venerable Pierre Toussaint from Haiti. This is a photograph of Venerable Felix Maria Gebremalak, who was a Cistercian priest from Eritrea. This is a photo of the Servant of God, Augustine Poulton, from the United States of America. This is um, a painting of St. Simon of Cyrene, the one who helped Jesus to carry his cross. This is an image of St. Iphigenia of Ethiopia. We mentioned her in the beginning. This is an image of Saints Felicity and Perpetua. Saint Felicity and Perpetua. This is a photograph of Saint Josephine Bekita, who is from Sudan. Here we have an image of Blessed Marie Clementine Anwarite Nengapeta, who was from Congo, a martyr. This is an photograph of Blessed Victoria Rosa Marivo from Madagascar. This is an image of Venerable Teresa Chikaba from Guinea. This is an image of the Servant of God Maria Giuseppina Benvenuti. And here we have a photograph of the Servant of God, Mother Mary Elizabeth Lang from the United States of America. We have a photograph of the Servant of God, Julia Greeley. And finally, a photo of the Servant of God, Thea Bowman. So some of these images were of saints, some of blesseds, and some of venerables and servants of God. Um, this is an image of Our Lady of Wilsdon, which is in Harlesden, and that is where we're going to go on our next episode. So join us for another episode of Building a Marian Culture. Ave Maria.